might be a tough decision right now. My but team did not just absolutely um, NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Lakes. Okay, it's recording. So this is me doing the intro because I have that job. <laughs> oh, so hey guys, this hey, is too. this is 100 and episode 118 or one 119 either or of those numbers so we're getting pretty high up there but we are going to be going over week 12 and predicting week 13 of the nfl uh games and we got a we got a lucky day on uh thanksgiving where we got an opportunity to watch three thanksgiving games early all on the same day on all in one thursday morning afternoon and evening and what a way to kick off the thanksgiving day in a little bit of a thriller one would say i would say that and i i am so mad at josh allen right now what? because i did a three game or i, I did a three bet parlay i needed yeah. jamal williams to score the first touchdown amon say brown to get eight plus receptions and josh allen to get 275 yards. He was 20 yards away from... Wait, you only needed 275? Yeah, and he got 253. I was 20 yards away from getting That's... $115. 115? Yeah. Th- honestly, I thought that would be a lot more. <laughs> well, I only bet it like $5. Uh, okay, that's actually amazing. Yeah, but oh, wow. Jam- Jamal Williams got the first touchdown. Amon St. Brown got eight receptions. I just need 20 yards. And I thought I was going to make it because it looked like it was going to go into overtime. But then a long reception to Stefan Dix got the Bills into field goal range in which they ended up kicking a field goal and barely beating the Detroit Lions. We're talking about the Buffalo Bills and Detroit Lions right now. Buffalo Bills won 28 to 25. And yeah, yeah. Josh, it looks like... um. Lions are hard to beat after all. Uh, insert at the beginning of the week when the Eagles also beat the Lions by three points, and then everyone was saying, "Oh my God, our defense sucks. We only beat the Lions by three points." But shout yeah. outs to Isaac, our friend Isaac, because we both have family in Michigan. I don't think either of us are like primarily Lions fans, but they have a place in our heart just because we have family in Michigan, very close to Detroit, and. We were talking about it because, like, growing up as, like, partial Lions fan, you always know the feeling of, like, being disappointed on Thanksgiving because it's supposed to be, like, you know, that's, like, the Lions game, you know? Mm-hmm. They're, it's, like, they get to play every Thanksgiving. Only two other teams have that, like, I guess, uh, that honor of having a Thanksgiving game every year. Um, and that's the Cowboys and now the Vikings. But every Lions fan knows the disappointment on Thanksgiving is like all your families together. For a lot of Lions fans, that's the most people you'll ever have in a room watching a Lions game because they haven't been to the playoffs in so long. Um, and then they always disappoint and always in the most brutal of ways. And so like Isaac and I were talking about it, like, yeah, we're going to get destroyed, whatever it's the Bills. And then it was like really close and Isaac sent it to me. He's like, no way. And then at the very end, I was like... This can't be real, bro. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. I saw this ridiculous tweet that honestly, I wanted to shed a tear when I saw this. And it was that the Bills are the first team to win back to back games at Ford Field since 2016. <laughs> because Yo. if you don't know, the Bills had played the previous week against the Browns at Ford Field because of snow in Buffalo. So they got both wins in, I guess, like a five-day span. That's insane. Lions haven't been able to win back-to-back home games since 2016. That's insane. That's that's kind of sad. Not going to lie. Wait, was that, the, was that a Lions home game originally, or was it a Bills home game? And- well, it was. The Lions Buffalo was that a no? It's the Thanksgiving game, so it's always at home. Okay, so it's always at the Lions. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Because I was going, that's kind of 
I would say that would be kind of crazy if this no like forced them to like go into Detroit again. Yeah, and... it took them two took away two home games. That'd be wild. Yeah, that'd be insane. Especially since it's Buffalo, they really like their home games. But I actually don't think they're like built for it because I think their running game is like pretty subpar. Imagine if they were able to get Christian McCaffrey or someone. That'd be insane, bro. When the Colts were about to play at the, well, they did. When the Colts went to Buffalo for the playoffs with Philip Rivers, like all that week, it was suspected to like be really terrible conditions for the weather. And then the day of, it was just like beautiful and sunny. <laughs> and then we lost. <laughs> and it was like right when Jonathan Taylor was like really heating up because he just had that 200 plus rushing yard game against the Jaguars. So everyone, all the Colts fans were like, the Bills don't want to see the Colts right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they just, it was a Josh Allen show. So that's funny. Um, yeah, the Next Bills, time. where are they now? 8 3? Yeah, 8 3. So that, that division's, that division's scary close because you got the Jets. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. You got the Jets playing really good. You got, you know, the New England Patriots playing semi okay. And then you got who else is in that division? Come on, bro. Bills. Come on. Bills, Patriots, Jets. I can't believe you said those other two before. The team well, you're you're supposedly a fan of. And, and you the root Dolphins. For all the time. And the Dolphins and the Dolphins. Allegedly, you love the Dolphins, but when it comes time to like name their division, you forget. Because I forget how AFC divisions work. Yeah, you're an NFC homer, so. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't suspect you to know. But and the Dolphins are doing really well, so that uh, I feel like the AFC East and NFC East is really like winning a shit ton, which is insane to see. Um, but speaking of the NFC East, we got the Dallas Cowboys first, the New York uh, Giants, Cowboys winning twenty eight to twenty, and yeah, this is kind of what we expected, but it was relatively cl- close up until. I think middle of the third quarter when the Dallas Cowboys kind of uh, started to steamroll and it kind of um, got carried away. And from that point on, it wasn't really a game, much of a game. Um, <laughs> wasn't really a game. Yeah. They just stopped playing football, both of them combined. Yeah. But I was kind of um, in and out of this game. So all I know is that... It, no, it, yeah, th- this yeah. game particularly is like the worst time schedule wise on Thanksgiving because it's like right when like people start eating. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, that's basically around the time people start eating or like at least the last half of the game, unless you're like a weirdo who starts your Thanksgiving dinner at like noon. (laughs) Couldn't it be me, but Mm -mm. you know, to each their own. So yeah, I feel like I I didn't, I personally didn't watch like the last half of that game. Yeah. When do you, I'm also like not invested. And Cowboys Giants, like if if they tie, I'd be happy, I guess. Yeah, honestly, I wasn't really rooting for um either of these teams because they're both seven and three. So I was rooting for the Giants. I just hate the Cowboys, but since they're tied, I don't, I didn't really need either or to win because like they have the same record. But when do you usually have Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> Actually, this year it's not like we do this every year, but this year we didn't have it until Friday. Because mm. we had just arrived. Um and you know how it goes with like family. It's like usually there's always like a division of like like which side of the family do you spend Thanksgiving with? And so like my my cousins ended up going to like the other side of their family for Thanksgiving Day. And then we had a another Thanksgiving dinner on Friday to like make make it so like everyone could be together and you didn't have to like make that decision mm-hmm. so yeah uh, on thanksgiving we just i don't know we ate at a normal time <laughs> yeah I don't know. my family I, I i don't know like when we would usually though because like i also like i spent thanksgiving with a different side of the family each year so it's not always consistent and we we very different traditions as far as thanksgiving goes one side of the family i've never eaten at like a table with Mm. like we don't sit down at a table all together and eat we sit in the living room on the couch mm. and you just and watch, watch tv 
yeah, yeah. football mainly most of the time but also like if there's a a good movie on i love family traditions like that <laughs> i don't even know if i want to call it a tradition i just think it's just like random habits <laughs> yeah. it's just like it just sort of happened i don't think anyone really thought much about it we're we're eating in front of the tv every single year and we're gonna make it a tradition. it's kind of just like how how it's laid out i guess the house but yeah what do you do on thanksgiving caleb yeah i usually just eat well my family usually eats around like 3 30 so i'm not used to eating like dinner that time it's mm-hmm. like a weird early time of dinner but I usually go over to like my dad's side of the family, um, and we have like a big Thanksgiving dinner with all, all of us with all my cousins and stuff. And I usually my sister and I usually spend the night at my mom's, and then we usually have like a morning breakfast or a morning like Thanksgiving like meal together. That's breakfast, right. and we go over to my dad's side of the family, and we have a big Thanksgiving dinner. Do you see a lot of like high school friends over Thanksgiving break at all? weird enough so we have this tradition where we go out to this one bar called tap room and we start drinking at like one in the afternoon until like 10 11 at night and i didn't i started drinking with my i started drinking at like 10 in the morning and then i didn't stop until like one in the morning so i was drinking all day on friday but we we went from the tap room because that's usually where all my aunts and uncles go but like the older cousins usually then leave that area to go to a different bar and mm-hmm. then all the older like people like go home and stuff and but right. it's called Telus. and I don't usually run into high school friends because they're not like normally in the area but I well I mean Brendan and I talked that we were both going out but I ended up running into Brendan and then spending spending at spending that night at his house which was weird because like that we, is hilarious. I we, thought I thought that was all coordinated. Nah, it was so weird. Well, it was and it wasn't because like we both said that we should like meet up, but we never said right. like when and where and like let's meet up now. We were my family just went to tell us and then like five. You minutes, manifested it though. Yeah, yeah, and then Brandon just like showed up and I turned around. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then we just started to hang out, and it was weird. Collision. That's cool. Because it was, like, both of his sisters and then my family. Like, it was a collision of families. Yeah, so there was, like, a lot of memes. And I've never got to experience this because I've never gone, like, where I went to high school. I never went back for, like, any break, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, apparently there's this meme that, like, Thanksgiving break is, like, the first time you see, like, everyone from high school since you, like, graduated. And so <laughs> there was like this one meme that was like, this is the Super Bowl for like anyone who's never left home <laughs> because you see all the uh, people that like, you know, usually wouldn't or something. I don't know. But apparently it's just, like a chance to show that you had like a glow up ever since like high school and stuff like that. <laughs> That's so funny. That's... And um, I never thought about it like that because I've never been in those environments where I see like all those old people. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder if like, anyone i know has gone through that because you know you 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 all still like go like home for thanksgiving i guess whereas like i go to like my family's home which isn't exactly the same um but i I noticed this from my cousins too because they always go to a bar the day before thanksgiving and like apparently it's like the the busiest day of the year other than the super bowl is the day before thanksgiving and i never knew that until like this year i thought that was funny that's insane yeah i never Apparently, it's called, like, Blackout Wednesday, in which, like, everyone gets, like, super drunk and stuff. I, yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. I just heard of that, like, this week as well. I <laughs> I had saying. never heard of that before, yeah. and then, you know, it makes sense, though. Yeah, because, like, everyone has off on Thursday, and everyone's, like, seeing each other after mm-hmm. Oh Yeah, that's what everyone says. Like, it's the busiest day of the year for bars other than the Super Bowl. I'm like, that is so random, but it's, I think it's hilarious. And, like, people were saying, like, if you're over 25, don't go out tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and there's stuff like that. I think it's hilarious. That's so funny. I know Trey, with his high school friends, he was seeing a lot of his high school friends. Yeah. I feel like that's mainly, like, a... Maybe it's a suburb thing more than a city thing, maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, so Dallas Giants. Uh, that was <laughs> yeah, a good... Yeah, I mean, it was the Thanksgiving games. You got to talk yeah. about Thanksgiving a little. But the next um... game... New England Patriots 
Close Close one was a pleasant surprise. Minnesota Vikings, 33 to 26. Vikings win. You predicted this correctly. But I was surprisingly how close this was because I did not think it was going to be this close. No, I I didn't. Well, actually, I I thought it would be pretty close. I'm pretty sure if you go back in the podcast, I said, yeah, I said it would be close, but a low scoring game. I was not prepared for how high scoring it was. Like both offenses were on fire from the very beginning. Probably the best game we've seen for Mac Jones all season. It mm-hmm. looked very much like how he was looking last year. And Justin Jefferson popped off too. I just, I, th- I thought it was the most entertaining game of the Thanksgiving, uh, I guess, stretch of games. Mm-hmm. And But Lions-Bills was also very entertaining. But I thought this one definitely was just really fun to watch. Just because, uh, I guess I'm not used to seeing like the Patriots perform that well. So I was like, yeah, it was just... Pleasant surprise. It, it's always nice when you have this close of a game. And in fantasy, I was playing against like Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson. And boy, oh boy, that that was not a good sight to see. But luckily, the person I was playing against like only had those two high scoring games. But yeah, Justin Jefferson, the past few weeks has kind of reinstated, I guess, except for the Dallas Cowboys game. But yeah, he's he's definitely making his mark again as one of the best receivers in the league and yeah there's that Patriots defense just couldn't find a rhythm to stop them and it's just crazy to see wait did Kirk Cousins end up having two interceptions I forget is that what I said yeah or I think that's may have what I said I don't think so I think maybe he got one he got one one more and he would have we would have gotten two two interceptions there wait where was that he threw 30 he completed 30 for 37 attempts. That's insane. 81% completion percentage? Holy shit. That's his best of the season. Damn. Good on Kirk. Is he an elite quarterback now? Question mark. And this I- really is a week-to-week league because everyone was talking about how trash he was last week against Cowboys, and now everyone's praising him again. <laughs> it's just like, we have the such short-term memory as like a fan, like, a general like fan base of like the NFL. Yeah. I feel like yeah, short term memory. Cause like everyone's talking about like Jonathan Taylor washed and I mean fucking you know, Rams all trash, which you know, bad record and all, but I still think the team is decent. Yeah. <sighs> it's weird. It is weird. Very, very weird. I don't I don't like how I it's just funny because it's like I'm what about what I'm about to say is very hypocritical, but I hate how wishy washy the NFL fans are. But I fall into that like all the time too. I don't know. It's the recency bias is just so strong. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers first, the Cleveland Browns. What what a game! What a game! Especially towards the end, Cleveland Browns ended up winning twenty three to seventeen, beating the red hot Buccaneers, in which they were on a really good streak the past few games. And we were speaking about on the how the Buccaneers are coming back, in which they still can come back. Um, Their division's so bad. They, yeah. they're, they're still they're, leading in the division. So At five and six. I think Falcons still have a chance, but Buccaneers are still the favorites, of course, because they're the Bucs. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't realize how bad that division was. I don't know why, but I just, like, never put two and two together. But it's, like, the NFC East last year, I believe, or a couple of years ago. Whenever the Eagles had that one tie. I think that was last year. Yeah, it could definitely end up. No, two years ago. A division winner that's under point five hundred, But uh, it'll probably be just, like, just above point five hundred, is my guess. Yeah, um, like nine and eight. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe maybe we'll see eight, eight and one. <laughs> Yo, that would be insane. I want that to happen so, so much. I wonder who they would tie with. I don't know. Maybe the Falcons. Let's see. I, I want that to happen. But... That'd be so wild. Wait, what was their last game? If it is, it's against the Falcons? It is. Okay, so imagine their last game, they tie. Mm-hmm. And it's like whoever wins it decides who goes in, and it they end up tying. That'd be wild. That would be insane. I yeah, want to. So, uh, I want to. I desperately want to see that. I feel like that would make my year. The Buccaneers, their last six games, they have to. Three of them are against their division. Mm. One against the Saints, one against the Panthers, one against the Falcons. Panthers and Falcons actually to end the year. So 
it's going to come down to the wire for sure. Whereas like in other divisions, such as um, the AFC South, it's a very like closed case because a lot of those divisional games were at the start of the year. Um, and Titans obviously have the better record, of course. But in this division, it's gonna it's gonna come down to the wire, and I think that's gonna be interesting to watch unfold. I'm here to see it. I I want the drama. I want I want Tom Brady to be nervous heading into the playoffs. I don't. You know what? Be... I'll say it because no one else is willing to. Panthers still have a shot. <laughs> they do. Panthers, say what you will. Still have not won a game on the road, but they could still win their division. So come on. <laughs> could I, I, I believe in the Panthers. They must go on a winning streak. <laughs> Let's go. I'm rooting for the Panthers now to go all the way to the playoffs. I want that to happen. I want them to kick kick Buccaneers out of the playoffs and then go into the playoffs. Yes sir. But yeah, this was a close game. Brissett was able to drive towards the end of the game. And I believe it was a Nick Chubb touchdown that tied at 17-17 in which went into overtime and then a crazy one-handed catch by their tight end to seal the deal and seal the win, which was an insane, insane catch. And, yeah, they ended up beating the Bucks, And, yeah. They and can't. now Brissett, as a reward for winning that game against Tom Brady, Will now get benched. <laughs> Congrats, Mr. For fucking Watson. For Red fucking played a game Watson. in one and a half years. <laughs> That's the saddest feeling. You know what's also sad about that is because Jacoby Brissett once was on the Patriots and was therefore benched, benched, quote unquote, for Tom Brady, right? Mm-hmm. And he finally beat Tom Brady as a oh. starter. <laughs> and now he's getting benched. Only to get a bench again. Tom Brady's like Tom Brady's like <laughs> sit the fuck down. You're not allowed to win or to play in this league anymore. He was also once benched by uh Philip Rivers. His his dying wish. I keep talking about Philip Rivers as if he's dead because that's how old he is in my mind. <laughs> that's how old he was on the Colts. It's like by the time he retires, he might as well be dead. <laughs> Because he was just so immobile <laughs> that entire season. <laughs> bro, bro, help. I love Philip Rivers. Jacoby Brissett this season said that is the best quarterback I've like ever played with. And he's played with Tom Brady. <laughs> and I think that's just the best thing. This is why I love Jacoby Brissett and why I cheered for the Browns this whole season up to this point is because I just love that man so much. Now yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna hope the Browns fucking tank and all of that, but I couldn't I couldn't be a Cleveland hater at in the moment. Bill Rivers is only forty. <laughs> no, he's younger than Tom Brady, but in my head he's like fifty five. Because <laughs> if you watch any Colts game in his final season, he just couldn't go anywhere. If you think Matt Ryan this year looks bad when he's trying to scramble. Oh my god, you should have seen Philip Rivers. They had to sub him out just for QB sneaks. <laughs> and Jacoby Brissett was like a hundred percent success rate on those. He was like the best QB sneaker in the league. But Let's go. I miss him so much. He's such a great locker room guy. And I mean, we could if Deshaun Watson fails, we could re- realistically see him getting benched. I don't care what his contract says. Because I think the locker room truly does take a liking to Jacoby Brissett. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and they're not like, I mean, are they out of it? I don't know. I guess they are four and seven. They're but, kind of out of it. But, I mean, Deshaun Watson is not even going to get paid this year. So, in reality, like, there's not really that much loss not playing Watson this year. Yeah, that's but true. We got Cincinnati Bengals versus Tennessee. Titans and boy oh boy, I bet you're happy about this one. The Bengals beat the Titans 20 to 16. They're both seven and four currently. And yeah, they just made that I guess that spot to the number one seed in the AFC that much more interesting. Honestly, I can't say how happy I really am about this because it's not like the Colts are any in any position to like compete with um the the top spot in the division. So, like, I don't really care. Titans can win as many regular season games as we want. We all know what's going to happen in the playoffs. 
Like they're not going anywhere. So like they can get for all I care, they can get number one seed. It doesn't matter. They're going to get embarrassed time and time again. Mm. So, you know, do what you want. <laughs> but it's not gonna like it's not gonna pan out any more than the Colts will. I mean, sure yeah. you will just keep returning the playoffs, but like at the end of the day, you're not winning the Super Bowl. You're still stagnant. So you don't have like a you don't have a, like a a prodigy at quarterback. I mean, they have Malik Willis, but he hasn't looked good. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, maybe maybe we're going to see Titans tank in the next couple of years soon. Hopefully, I feel like they're p- purely running on Derrick Henry. That's their yeah. engine, and as soon as that engine fails, realistically, it could feel fail soon because Derrick Henry is kind of getting up there in age. Yeah. I- for sure, and I'm... obviously, I I will I will give them the benefit of the doubt because they did actually do really well without Derrick Henry last year. But I think that was very different circumstances. Um, they also still had AJ Brown. I don't know. I think Tannehill's fine, but he's kind of just like Kirk Cousins. Like Vikings aren't winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, they're the, they're the Titans. They're the okay. Titans to me of the NFC. Yeah, they always play relatively well, but. And always have this like um, offensive power. Yeah, you know, will like, it pan out? Like, I mean, their their defense looks good too. I would say they're well coached now with the new guy. But will it pan out? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Joe Burrow looked good in this game, and the replacement for Joe Mixon. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He he played great again. I feel like he's a great uh. Second back and rotational player too. Once Joe, if Joe Mixon does get injured like he is, and just a rotational guy throughout the game as well too. He had 17 carries, 58 yards, and a touchdown. How do you say his name? Because I don't want to butcher it. Samahe Perine, Perine. Samahe. I I want to say Samahe, yeah. Samahe. Um. Yeah, but he he's been looking good too, and T Higgins went off as well. Seven receptions, 114. Yards and a touchdown, and this is kind of where we kind of expected the Bengals to be relatively 7-4. Could be playing better, but could be playing worse, but staying close in these tight games and managing to win these closer games throughout the year, like they kind of been doing the past couple years. I I didn't watch this game, so I don't really know what happened, to be honest. Yeah, we can go forward. Yeah, with the Miami Dolphins, Houston Texans. Miami Dolphins destroyed the Texans throughout this majority of this game and the 15 points were just garbage time points but the Miami Dolphins were at one point up 30 to nothing and then Texans just like scrambled a couple points together but yeah this is kind of how we expected this game to go Tyreek Hill Tyreek I predicted him to get 200 receiving yards but he got 80 80 yards I believe and six receptions so that kind of makes sense because once you have that lead you don't really need a pass and they were doing a, a lot of mixture. I think their defense got a touchdown, and then I forget his name. I think Wilson also got a rushing touchdown as well. So they just kept it on the ground and had other people involved as well. True. So, yeah, I think what you said about uh, Houston getting those 15 points was actually, like, pretty big because it was at half that Miami had 30-0. So it wasn't like, you know, they – just got that 30 point lead at like middle of the fourth quarter it was like houston still had like a whole half to play with and like that's still a huge deficit don't get me wrong but miami benched their starters and so the texans like in the third quarter got those 15 and then everyone was like wait a second (laughs) is miami will miami have to bring back their starters this might be bad but the texans you know tanked they're, they're definitely tanking. Like, I think it's pretty obvious now. I think they've actually had, like, some pretty close games that they've kind of, like, forfeited, I guess, mm. for lack of a better word. Like the Eagles game. Like, at the very end. <laughs> yeah, they let the Eagles win. You got, you got off lucky. <laughs> Same with the Colts game, actually. We're actually tanking. Yeah. Uh, that whole fiasco where we didn't do the timeout against the Steelers, uh, that was just because we're tanking. <laughs> Don't worry yeah, about yeah. it, you know? Uh, fumbling at the goal line, that's just – just oh, yeah. Saturday's strategy of yeah. uh, making sure we don't win that game. He was not expecting us to be at the goal line in the first place. So he was like, yeah, JT, 
we know you have the best hands in the league, but uh, you know, just just fumble it, you know. It's all good. We were playing checkers while Josh Saturday's playing chess. He really is. He just had to get that dub against the Raiders first. Just to like, you know, make things interesting. But fun fact, uh, since we're on the topic, the Colts are number 14 in like draft positioning. We have the 14th pick. Mm -hmm. Over the course of one game, we could have a top five pick. Really? How's how 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 I I haven't like exactly worked out the math of this, so I could be completely wrong. (laughs) But there are let me see, like, there's got to be, like, 10 teams with four wins right now. There's Damn, 10 I... teams with four wins right now. And it goes all the way from the Colts to the Panthers, who are at four and eight and have and hold the fifth overall pick. Mm-hmm. But because the Colts have the one tie, they technically get half a game over the rest of the nine teams that have uh, four wins. So let's say, I don't know who they're facing off against, but let's theoretically, they all win next week and the Colts lose. We'll have a top five pick. I, I was insane. saying this whole time that the Colts like aren't going to be in position to have like you know that high of a pick, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh shit, maybe we maybe we could. So, Yo, that's yeah. that's literally a a third of the league is has four wins. <laughs> I did not I did not realize dude, that. it's so top heavy this year. That's an, I feel like there's like not really any middle of the pack like teams. Like, yeah, it's it's really just like the Chargers, yeah, <laughs> and like Patriots maybe, but <laughs> those are the only middle of the pack people. Yeah, that's insane. I I never really looked at the records until like now, and I'm like seeing everything. I'm like, damn, it is like kind of very lopsided. Not like lopsided, yeah, like what you just said with like mm-hmm. not really any middle of the pack teams, but yeah, Houston, Houston's tanking. They're what <laughs> one that. <laughs> One nine and one, and next week we have Bro. a that we're reading links every four loss team so that the Colts can get a top five team <laughs> or top five. Pick. Give me that top five pick. <laughs> it's gonna be Houston one, <laughs> Colts two, Eagles three <laughs> because of the Saints pick. That's the dream. That's the dream. Yes. Yo. And then Denver gives Seahawks at four just to piss off Trey. Yes, yes. It's all That's coming together, Titus. Everything. And is- then fuck it. Houston again at five because they get Cleveland's pick. <laughs> Houston with two top five picks. Why not? And then Jags six. <laughs> yeah. Just because. Just so this game went as everyone expected i was i'm so mad because i was about to pick up um jason sanders and fantasy but i i forgot to do some waiver pickups and oh the kicker yeah the kicker and he ended up getting like 19 points or 19 points in my other league i don't know how much he got in like oh yeah because of extra points yeah yeah we we don't do that bullshit you should not get a point for extra points in fantasy Obviously, it, in, in actual football, you should. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in, in fantasy, I think it's dumb. I think I like the way where we do it, where if you miss, you lose a point. I love that. I, I, I hate it so much. Why do you hate it? I hate and love it because it makes so much sense. But when it happens to me, I hate it so much because I'm like, I love let's it. Say, let's say you're a garbage team in our league who's like starting quarterback is, say, like Aaron Rodgers or something. Yeah. And your starting running back is, I don't know. <laughs> Who's an underwhelming? Who's Antonio. Underwhelming? Antonio. Who? Antonio Gibson? Yeah, Antonio Gibson. Sure. And your starting wide receiver is <laughs> Deontay Johnson. Your starting tight end is Robert Tanyan. <laughs> like, let's just say you're one of those. Yeah. Your highest scoring player even if that's your lineup, should not be the kicker. And in leagues where extra points count as a point, that ends up happening. And I hate that because a, a kicker should not have like 15 plus, plus points. That is so stupid. For basically doing nothing all game and just getting the chip shot. If like your team is like a, the fucking Bills or Chiefs that just get a bunch of touchdowns and then the kicker goes out and gets that one needless point. You want to know that something even more ir- irritating? You're gonna you're gonna be so mad at this. Okay. 
in this league, it's not one point. Shut the fuck up. It's two. That makes no sense. <laughs> Why? Last, okay, last... any scoring play should not be more than it is in actual f- football. <laughs> <laughs> like that makes no sense <laughs> because it you know in most fantasy leagues it's like if you get a rushing or receiving touchdown it's six if you uh if you do a passing touchdown it's four because quarterbacks are expected to throw more touchdowns you know yeah but like you should not get two for a play that nets in one point in actual football that makes no sense it's so funny we had a kicker last week he was on the bench he got 31 points. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> that is like a nightmare. That's a nightmare league. I, 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 you need I'm, to send me a screenshot of all of their scoring things because maybe it's better where it's like maybe every score is just increased. But if it's like relatively the same proportion as our league and it's just for whatever reason you doubled the extra point, that is so fucked. <laughs> well, I mean, the... The owner like increased, so defenses are also they're up, like they have more value as well. And then it's point per reception league as well, so it kind of balances, it's a full point. Yeah, it kind of balances out, I think, but not yeah, maybe. I don't think a full point per reception does enough to offset that, but yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Why are you proud of yourself? <laughs> I'm going to clip that because you look so smug after you burped. You're like, <laughs> like what was that? Because I, I was, it was a mixture of, I, because I, I was like, I wanted to play it off and just like continue into the Jets game. But I just started laughing in my mind and I couldn't but I couldn't decide on a like a route where I would acknowledge it and like right. start laughing at it or I wouldn't acknowledge it and just continue on the Jets. So it, I guess it created a smug face without me trying to be fucked. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, the Jets destroyed the Bears with not Zach Wilson at quarterback, not even Joe Flacco, Super Bowl MVP at quarterback. But Mike White, who is Mike White, you may be asking. I actually don't know. I don't know where he came from, why he's there, why he's starting over Joe Flacco, when all Joe Flacco did in his time as the Jets starter before Wilson got healthy was do a good job and just win games. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Mike White is starting, but I'm not mad about it because he did really good just out of nowhere. 78.5. Completion percentage, 350 Bro, yards. Three you have to see his Wikipedia picture. <laughs> Please overlay it on this recording because this is the funny. He does not look like an actual quarterback. Bro, what? This is like what a the... business major at Temple University. This is their LinkedIn profile pic. <laughs> That's what this is. What the what the what is this? Why is that so accurate, Titus? <laughs> <laughs> is it is that not like that is what a Fox Business School LinkedIn profile picture looks like? <laughs> it's so true. He's like, what up guys? Um yeah, so <laughs> he was donate. definitely at Maxi's cheering USA and say and chanting it's called soccer at Maxi's today. <laughs> While just like pounding Miller lights with his boys, yeah, that's what that's what this Mike White looks on in his Wikipedia picture, and he also has the perfect name for a business major as well. <laughs> Mike White, <laughs> it's so true. You you would think Zach Wilson was as wor- as bad as it gets, but no, they had to bench him for Mike White. <laughs> I didn't think you could get more douchier than Zach Wilson, but here we are, Mike White. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, it's crazy. I forgot the statistics on it, but it was some. It was some crazy statistic. I think I don't even know what it is, but it it's been such a long time since Jets had an actual QB. And I think this is like the first. I don't. I don't want to say like a random stat and it being wrong, but it's been a while since 
Um, the Jets had a 300 yard performance and three touchdowns. It's insane. But it's Mike White. What are you gonna do? Excuse me. Sorry. Mike White. It's just Mike I White. mean, I'm not mad, bro. Like they're gonna go to the playoffs, and when they're there, it's going to be Mike White show. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. He's the new Nick Foles. I'm saying it. <laughs> they're gonna win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Bro, I hope you Sauce Gardner MVP. <laughs> Super Bowl MVP. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be against the Eagles, just absolutely locks AJ Brown up. And then Mike White is just throwing dimes. Darius Lay is panting on the field. It's 45-10. <laughs> That's my worst nightmare. Losing to Mike White. <laughs> Dude, they I... do the Philly special. I... <laughs> First drive, they do it too, and it's like, I don't know what's worse if they do on the first drive or when they're already up by thirty five points, and then they do it. Yeah. I can see it happening. The Jets Eagles Super Bowl, it's it's bound. It's I need that happen. to happen, but just because switch- we're also like, it's two teams are like geographically probably like the closest as close as you can get. So that would just be such chaos. Yeah, yes. Yes. Everyone's just driving up and down from New York and Philadelphia, like causing mayhem to each other. Bro, seats. that highway is going to be fucked. Yeah. People are going to be passed out on the road. Yo, that's going to be so bad. That's going to be so bad. Enough, enough talk about this Mike White guy. Let's get to. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. Let's Washington get... broke my heart. Actually, the Falcons broke my heart, but Titus. in in Washington's hands. Titus, um, why did I thought we already established this last week? I will what? never give up. <laughs> I will never. I'm hopeless, bro. Yo, we we have this thing. I don't know how many times we need to explain it, but it just gets <laughs> every time. We talk about the Falcons game. It gets funnier and funnier because we have such bad luck. I think more so Titus than me because I vaguely remember you getting me on this trend. And then it it was just so weird because every time Titus and I, well, it originally started with Titus, but then I hopped on the train. But Titus always picked, Titus and I always picked Atlanta to win. And we were like, come on, let's get Atlanta win. They lose. But every time when we vote or predict a thanks Atlanta, they win. And we, we can never we can never we can never get this right. And it's always so funny. They always disappoint us, but then they always make us so happy. It's true. <laughs> the Falcons, um what are they? Oh, they're now five and seven. Shit, man. That makes me so sad because like I was really like I was on the bandwagon for a second. I thought Maybe Mariota was legit. There was how Kyle Pitts now, which is sad. But man, I I also wanted to pick the Falcons because I'm so tired of seeing Taylor Heineke. <laughs> I don't want to see him anymore. Bro, it's he makes me Taylor- so mad. He cost the Colts a second round pick. I'm over it. Okay, <laughs> get him off my screen. If I see another <laughs> Heineke led Commanders game, I am smashing the television. It's Bro, over. Heineke is the best QB in the league. I don't know what you're talking about. He, he makes me so mad. It's really not his fault. I hear he's a great guy. The team, like the locker room loves him, but I just don't want to hear about it anymore. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> that trade single handedly destroyed the Colts. <laughs> Dude, it's all, it's been all downhill from there because we were looking really good. You know what I mean? Like we, yeah. we went to the playoffs 11 and five with Phillip Rivers on his dying wish was just to go to the playoffs with the Colts and we fulfilled that for him. Rest in peace. But ever since then, it's just like, it's been so bad for the Colts, man. Like it can't get worse. Right. And then just Saturday becomes coach. And it's like, Oh, now we're just a meme. Cool. I feel like I'm just that one homo or the Homer Simpson meme where he's just like, he's just like, standing up and then he disappears in the bushes i feel like that's just us with carson wentz or i guess it was mainly me in the beginning because like i know i was such a carson wentz fan and it's like yo he's gonna take the calls to the playoffs he's going to get he's going to be like super bowl contenders and then like the past two years has just been slowly like 
it could have at least been, been like with the Broncos, where it's like from the get go. Okay. From the get go, Russell Wilson was just bad, and now it's like, oh, they're not making the playoffs. Like it's it's set in stone right now. But instead, it came down to the fucking Week 18 Jacksonville game. And once shit the bet, the whole team did, but once particularly was really bad in those last like three games of the year. So it's just like, it's like, not only do we lose, but we have to lose in the most embarrassed embarrassing ways like it's just so needless anyways it's i don't know so- I, I i don't want to talk about i don't want to talk about i feel like i keep going off on colt's <laughs> tangents when we're not even like we haven't even gone to the colt's game yet like that is you've been so funny i i love when you start talking about the colts because you just like ran about the colts and you're like all right that's the last round of the year next week you're on a like another 20 minute tangent about how much the Eagles- somehow it just gets worse and it's just like you think it can't but then it does yeah. it's just like you know this week it was like at least we've never we haven't lost a primetime game this year you know it's been so long and then we we have to do that we have to show up on monday night and do that and lose to the Steelers. You are so terrible. Kenny Pickett randomly has the best game of his life. Wasn't that like his first win? I'm so mad. <laughs> like it's just so so unnecessary. I'm looking up his stats now. Yeah. And you know what you know what I said last week about how the Colts are like one of I think wait, wait, wait. Oh my gosh. We're now the only team that hasn't allowed 30 plus points because Green Bay allowed 40 against the Eagles. Hey, we're now yeah. the last team. And now as soon as I say that, Cowboys are going to drop 50. Like, I can already predict it. It's going to happen. Yes. Yes. It's going to happen. <sighs> Anyways, I'm done. Um, We can talk uh, about how Denver is a – honestly, I think not. we're in competition, the Colts and the Broncos, for how bad can it get? How bad can it get? Because now players are openly arguing with Russell Wilson on the sideline during games like say what you will but that that wasn't happening that still hasn't happened to matt ryan it didn't even happen to sam ellinger yeah will i say it? i will it didn't even happen to carson wentz all right people stood by his side but <laughs> russell wilson is already taking off his his uh his team and he hasn't even been there a full season he hasn't even played every game this season because of an injury like it's pretty bad over there I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the clip where he's getting yelled at. You know, it's, something with- it's so funny. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many memes of like <laughs> Russell, like people saying like, "What did Russell Wilson say in order for him to like respond like that?" And people were like saying that Russell was saying cheesy shit, like, "Oh, it's Russell Wilson time, baby!" <laughs> like Broncos country, this right? I think that's so funny because he would. Yes, yes. Is this, the, this also clip? losing to the Panthers? I would, I would feel this way too. Because <laughs> it's not even just losing to the Panthers; it's losing to the Panthers while they're starting their like third different quarterback of the season. <laughs> so it's, it's like, like pretty I'm... fucking bad. <laughs> Yo, it's so bad. Look, <laughs> I just can imagine Russell being like, "Roll Tide, Roll Tide, Roll Tide." <laughs> Why would he be saying roll tide? Boy, no, no, no. I meant let's ride. Crap. Just turns into an Alabama fan. I meant let's ride. I used to see him saying let's ride. Let's ride. That's his only form of communication. I don't know why he said roll tide. So yeah, poor Trey. That's all I gotta say there. He just Dude, can't... it's so funny because like as high as I was on the Colts, I think he was higher on the Broncos entering the season. Yeah, I feel like you definitely took a way more realistic approach to the Colts, and and Trey was like thirteen three or fourteen three. <laughs> because Bro. on Twitter, like when I would talk about the Colts and like my prediction forecast, I was saying stuff like eleven six. You know what I mean? And then people would respond and be like, "Who? Who's? What six teams are we losing to on our schedule?" They would like share the graphic to me in the replies, and it's like point out the six teams and by how much because I don't think it's happening. I was like, guys, guys, we're gonna lose some games. It, it just happens. It's the first season with Matt Ryan. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, all right? And then obviously we did way worse than I predicted, but 
people were way higher on the Colts, right? And yeah. I was saying the same shit about the Broncos. And I was like, hold up, hold up. They could still do very good, but I don't think they're going to be like top of the conference. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's Russell Wilson's first season there, new head coach as well at the same time. Like, that's a recipe for some shakiness. And so I took a more reasonable approach. And I, I mean, I still was pretty optimistic in general and said 11 6 with the Broncos as my prediction. But other people like Trey, they were way higher. I and, was. Uh, that's just got to be such a letdown. I was also very high on the Broncos as well. But little did I know how bad the Denver Broncos new coach is. Because he's already in conversation about getting fired. Fired. Right. I mean, if if this had happened uh, two years ago, it would be big news. But I feel like owners are more prone to firing coaches midseason now. Because, yeah. I mean, after what happened with, like, Urban Meyer and Gruden from the Raiders last year, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like something something's in the water. Like, if you're yeah. not, like, a top-five coach, your job's on the line. If you have even one bad season, I feel yeah. like I feel like it's just, it's just how it feels. Especially, like, Doug Peterson getting fired. Like, we know he's a good coach. Like, everything he's doing with the Jaguars right now, I think, is, like, really good. I think Trevor Lawrence is, like, doing better because he has Peterson as his coach. But, like, I feel like, you know, the trends are very different. Like, if you if you don't, like, come out swinging, it's bad. I mean, even the Texans head coach from last year, like, he had one year with a really bad team where, like, their starter franchise quarterback wanted out but then got suspended. Like, he had nothing on that team at that point. And then he gets fired. It's like he he took the fall for that season. It's just so sad. I think Lovey Smith is decent, perhaps, but I mean, we'll have to see once they actually like, you know, are a team because right now they're barely a team. Yeah, but I, yeah. I could I could realistically see Hackett getting fired. Yeah, it's just crazy too because I remember I think when Chip Kelly, and or I I'm pretty sure it was Chip Kelly and or Andy Reid. Either or I I'm pretty sure it was Chip Kelly, but I remember them getting fired like week 16 and everyone like week 15 everyone was surprised and that was like seven years ago like that's unheard of of a coach getting fired like two weeks before but now like you said it's very common to have a coach get fired mid-season and like even a couple years ago too where we were still accustomed to and I guess we were still kind of accustomed to at least giving a coach two years like the first year is like kind of a trial trial with the team, getting accustomed to the team, getting accustomed to how things work. And then year two is kind of the year to prove it. And if you don't show any improvement and or worse, then you get fired. But now mm-hmm. we're in just a complete realm of clusterfuckery where it's like you don't, you don't, know, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, but yeah, true. you got the Baltimore Ravens versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Boy, oh boy, was this a crazy ending. First, but first of two games in which a team won on a two-point conversion in which they could have tied the game and went in an OT. And this being the first. And Doug Peterson's balls are are humongous. I feel like he's at the point of this season where he's like, all right, we're three and seven. We have a lot of catching up to do. More than likely, we're probably not going to get into the playoffs. Let's just say fuck it and see what happens. And it paid off pretty well. And Ravens, Ravens fans, this year has been super rough. They've had major leads throughout this year, and they had opportunities to close games. And this just makes me really happy to be an Eagles fan as well. And just because okay, they've still only had four losses, though. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. Like, it's not that bad. Yeah, I guess I'm making it more dramatic than it is, but. It is it is really nice still to be an Eagles fan because we are we have these like big leads and we're able to like close out games. And if I was a Ravens fan, even though it's only four losses, I would be pissed because right now the realistically the Baltimore Ravens should at least have two more runs than they are and should be dominating the league right now. And they, they still are, but it's they're just losing games like this, which is weird to see in which they should have should be winning. I mean, Lamar Jackson just does not have the talent around him right now. So, 
until that's addressed, nothing's really going to happen. I yeah. guess the Odell Beckham sweepstakes, like that's still up for grabs. Although I think I think it's really up to the Cowboys and Giants now, but maybe maybe Ravens can swoop in. Who knows? Yeah, they got they they got uh Deshaun Jackson, and which is still crazy because at the age of thirty five, he had the fastest recorded catch at like twenty one point like seven five, which was like the fastest time out of anyone this week. Which mm-hmm. I know he's not like an a, elite receiver, and obviously Odell Beckham is a lot better right now than Deshaun Jackson but it's it's just crazy to see that Deshaun Jackson still has that speed at the age of 35 because he made I think he got like a 50 50 60 yard reception which is his 13th quarterback that he got that long of a reception which is absurd but he still got it coming off of free agency and yeah he still got some aspects from his younger self which is really nice to see and it makes me really miss old Deshaun Jackson because sure. that I, I got like flashbacks when I saw that I got flashbacks Ooh. from like early Deshaun Jackson when he was on the Eagles and that made me miss miss him a lot but that that was probably the only real highlight of this game for yeah, me yeah don't get me wrong I love Deshaun Jackson in his prime particularly mm-hmm. but it's just not enough he's had five targets over two games that's that's not enough for Lamar right now. I think I feel like if they want to be like a real contender, they just they need to address that. Still really confused about trading uh Hollywood Brown away. Obviously, at first glance it could just be a contract thing. I don't know. But I would say like address it in free agency immediately or like use another first round pick that you inherited from that trade in order to address it. But instead they is rolling with Rashad Bateman and uh, Mark Andrews. And I don't know. I just don't feel like it's enough. And I guess, like, they're depending on, like, the running backs to return and start doing really good. But they, they're they still dealing with those injuries and just not being consistent. So it's rough. It's rough. I hope he gets some pieces surrounding him soon because that team, that team's just a couple pieces away from winning a few Super Bowls. True. But he got... You got the Los Angeles Chargers versus Arizona Cardinals. And this is the second game in which, I guess, back-to-back talking about how Chargers won off of a two-point conversion to end the game in which they could have just kicked an extra point and tied and went into overtime. But they saw what the Jaguars did a couple hours earlier, and they were like, let's risk it all. And it paid off with, uh, I forgot who scored the touchdown. I th- He was number seven. Is that Palmer? I think that maybe seven. Oh. Uh, that Palmer's five. I'm pretty sure. Five. Maybe Carter then. Yeah. N- needless to say, they won off of a two point conversion, and this this was a very close game and an exciting game. And yeah, I I was mad because I have Austin Eckler, and my fantasy team was very close. And I was watching the game day like view channel, and was the game that was on was the Seahawks and the Raiders game, and which was very close towards the end. But we wanted to watch the Chargers because we had more, or I had more fantasy points in this one, or Mm -hmm. more fantasy players. And so game day just simply was not showing this game. So I wanted to watch this game, but couldn't because, like, I was only able to watch the um, Seahawks game. But, yeah, it ended in thrilling fashion, and Justin Herbert went off. He had a great game. And Kyler Murray also had a great game as well. And DeAndre Hopkins had a crazy, crazy touchdown as well. Herbert went 75%, 74.5 completion for 774 yards, three touchdowns, and 109 rating. But, yeah, that's all I got to say for that game. I got to this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lost with, like, the, the these games because – I was driving back from Alabama to Michigan. Yeah. I think the only ones I was focused on in this lot, I think it was the Chiefs game because I had Travis Kelsey in fantasy. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Wait, how long is that drive from Alabama to Michigan? I don't really remember. It might be like 10 hours. That's insane. I would be dead. I guess that's the same distance from Philadelphia to Michigan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the disparity is not that much because – I mean, driving through, like, Kentucky and Tennessee, those are, like, not very, like, tall states. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you kind of go through those like a breeze. But it's just, like, 
driving through Ohio sometimes takes a while. And uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, but the only thing that I'll say about the Seahawks uh, Raiders game that it was a crazy nail biting game, going back and forth towards the end. Walker had two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs had a career game. He had two, oh yeah, two hundred and thirty yards rushing and seventy yards receiving for like three hundred and five total scrimmage yards, which was absurd. Sheesh. He had forty eight total uh fantasy points, which. I just wanted to mention because that that was an absurd game and he just went off. He had an 86 yard rushing touchdown to seal the deal in overtime. And I was wishing it was going to be Walker. But yeah, Viking or the Raiders kept this game close and it's one of the few games this year that they actually won a close game because this year they could have a lot better record, but they just keep losing these tight games. And yeah, Seahawks fall. They're six and five now. And yeah, currently the entire NFC East is in the playoffs right now. And it's crazy to see because Washington 75. I wanted to mention this earlier, but Washington, due to the Seahawks losing, Washington 7 and 5, and they enter that last wild card spot. Yes, that is pretty crazy. I'm going to make a bold prediction, though. Hmm. I think that only one, there will only be one NFC East wild card team. Mm. Is that the Cowboys? I don't. I'm not gonna say who, mm. but I'm just saying that like, it's not going to be three wild card teams. It's, it's not even going to be two. It's just going to be one, because I think Seahawks will still make it. One of those other teams are just going to go on a run. I don't know who, but it's going to be crazy. Who whoever does it is going to be huge. If like Packers make a last, last second run into it, or like Lions or Falcons make a run into the playoffs. Someone's going to do it, and it's going to be historic. That would be absurd. I would like to see it. I would also like to see it. I would like to see that or all of the a- NFC East make it into the playoffs. I don't want to see two teams from the N- – or I don't want to see three teams from the NFC East in the playoffs. I only see I want to see two or all of them because I feel like two, three NFC East teams would be annoying. But I think I think it's going to be the Cowboys who make it into that wild card spot. But I can see the Giants and Washington. They fall. do have the the advantage right now. Yeah, um, but just a how, win over. Yeah, just how they are winning, or just how all of those teams are playing right now. I just have the more faith in the Cowboys. Faith, in the Cowboys. But that would be funny if they start to tank. But nonetheless, Kansas City Chiefs versus the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, this is exactly how I saw this game going. Uh, Chiefs had a dominant performance against the Rams. They beat them 26-10. to 10. Kelsey had a ma- a long touchdown to start off the game. I think it was like a 40-yard, 35-yard reception for a touchdown. And the yak on that boy is crazy. He went like 25, 30 yards with just yak, and he was dodging everyone. It's crazy watching that guy play. He needs... There needs to be a conversation about him being taken in the first round. Like, mm-hmm. that is a first-round pick in my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, what do we say about quarterbacks? Like, you don't take him in the first round because likely you're going to get a similar production out of someone in round three or four. You know what I mean? With the tight ends, like, there's no one that comes even yeah. close to Travis Kelsey production. Mm-hmm. If you have a first, like, a late first-round pick, go Tra- Travis Kelsey. 100%. That's my fantasy advice as the highest record in our <laughs> fantasy league. And Whoa. um yeah. I want to I want to I'm going to uh come back and get the highest record this year. You could. Championship. You're going to win it all? Yeah, I want to win it all this year. It's going to be you. I'm, I'm the first one to clinch playoffs by the way. I saw that. I was like, "You little bitch." I w- <laughs> I'm you're at 99. I'm at 99. (laughs) 99. I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed. But I'm so happy too, because like in my other league, I'm on a hundred percent. And I'm the first one in that league to be a hundred percent. And in this league, I'm at 99%. So I'm like, I'm 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 relaxed in fantasy for the first time in three years. (laughs) Dude, the battle for the fourth spot is insane. There's four teams that are six and six. I think the 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 top three is definitely solidified with you, me, and Boise Noisy. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
Those other four, it's going to be spicy, man. Yeah, who do you think is going to get in? I think Brendan definitely has the advantage, but after beating him this week, his team is kind of rough. It was mainly due to injuries, oh, I will be fair. But uh, it seems like it's getting better, those injuries. It looks like they're not out, and they're more so questionable right now. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah it's definitely going to be interesting. I don't know. I, I love this. I love this. But hey. also, did you see the trade I did with Trey? Oh, no. What is it? <laughs> it was before this week, and he's got to be kicking himself for this because, okay, Wait, basically the, the trade was Justin Herbert and Devontae Smith for Tua Tagovailoa and Tyler Boyd. Because mm-hmm. at that point, Justin Herbert was on a really bad streak of games and Tua was on a really good streak, all right? Mm-hmm. This past week, Tua scored, had, a, in our league, 14 points. And Justin Herbert had like 25 or something like that. <laughs> Finally getting like a good fantasy game after so long. So, yeah. But he still won his game because he got carried by Josh Jacobs. Yeah. But it's I, funny how that works. And I love how you bench Justin Herbert too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, fuck this guy. Salt in the wound. I was like, <laughs> thanks for the trade. I'm not using him. I really was just like, fuck it. I'll get Devontae Smith. Who knows what happens there? I'm just, bro, I'm thinking one step ahead because, like, let's say something happens to A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. The final weeks of this season, Devontae Smith's stock is rising, rising. And if that comes at at playoff time, like, that could be the difference maker. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Just, like, you know, filling my bench with people that theoretically could be those difference makers if uh, those conditions are met. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just, I just want to win the championship this year so badly because I, I want it to go from you to Brendan to me. I don't know. It, it's just so funny. <laughs> it's coming home, baby. It's coming nope, home. Nope, I this... want that trophy back so bad. You know how mad I was putting it in Brendan's room? I was actually furious. <laughs> I wanted to keep it. It's such a nice trophy. This is going to be me as championship as the last uh year for the podcast so i'm gonna be like last year of the podcast and i guess the last year of the league if i'm being honest yeah i just didn't know how long we're gonna continue it i didn't want to assume anything but i kind of want to just like quit fantasy altogether (laughs) it takes so much time out of like my life yeah because like i'm in so many leagues like i'll probably still do like the one dynasty league i'm in of course, but other than that, yeah. I also, think I do I, like I do like fantasy basketball. I do like every sport, so it's just a lot. Yeah, you're really in it. You're in it, in it. My fantasy basketball, I'm killing them. Anyways, I want to ask like, questions, but I know that's going to be like a thirty minute rant off of like basketball and stuff. For sure, dude. We got San Francisco 49ers versus the New Orleans Saints. This was a boring ass game. Thirteen. The 49ers won thirteen to zero. This is the fourth straight game, fourth or fifth straight game, where the 49ers did not allow a singular point in the second half. So their defense is dominating. That's literally all I got to say for that game. They are, um, what, are they going to go to the NFC Championship again for the fucking, like, fourth time in five years? <laughs> like, 49ers, man, they're, uh, they're so close. I feel You're- like... I mean, they could win the Super Bowl. They're, like, the only team in the league where I could, like, realistically say or, like, feel, like, confident saying that, like, they could win the Super Bowl even though their quarterback isn't elite. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like having an elite quarterback is, like, that's so necessary for most teams. But for – I feel like for the 49ers, it's not so much. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Eagles are going to repeat what they did. In the 2017 year, okay? It's going to be 49ers, Eagles. Eagles are facing thanks to the number one ranked defense of X. I don't know if the 49ers are the number one ranked defense. They're not, but... <laughs> but they're, they're really close, you know? They're at least top five, probably, in that range. Sure. And the Eagles are going to come in, absolutely destroy the 49ers, 38-10. to 10. Eagles go into the Super Bowl and destroy... 
Mike White. I'm calling it. <laughs> Mike White. That is a uh, that's brave, honestly. <laughs> You're so brave. Thanks. Wait, I actually don't know what the rankings are. I don't even know how to like look. Is it just like total yardage? Maybe I don't know. I don't even know. Defense allow. Let's see. Where can I look at this? Defense stats. Yards per game. Oh, okay. 49ers have allowed the least amount of yards per game. Points per game, also leading the league in that. But love- Philadelphia has allowed the lowest quarterback rating. Mm. So That's pretty good. Go. I looked up the top defense in the NFL 2022, and it says the San Francisco 49ers. Personally, I think it's the Colts, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's going to want to hear that. So I mean – have they allowed a shutout in four straight second halves? They're the only team in the league that hasn't allowed 30 plus points in a game. So take that as you will. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah. Who did they face, though? What? The pathetic Eagles and the Chiefs? Yeah, you're right. Talking about the Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Boy, oh boy, what a domination by the Eagles. Not really, though. This was such a weird weird game. This was such a weird game because our offense was – this was a complete domination from our offense. Besides of the weird A.J. Brown little fumble, I don't even know what's going on with A.J. Brown because that's his second fumble in back-to-back games now. Wait, it could be back-to-back – no. It's just back-to-back games. So he didn't have one in nice Washington. But this is that's concerning. AJ Brown's concerning because he did not play well thanks the Col- or he did not play well against the Commanders. Colts and- too. Don't worry, you can say it. <laughs> and the Colts. <laughs> it's three straight three straight games where he's he's looked like shit, but he managed to get a touchdown this game. But complete domination by Jalen Hurts too. He had 157 yards rushing. He had a hundred. I think 100, I don't know how many yards passing he had. I think it's definitely under under 200. But this is the most uh, rushing by a quarterback in Eagles history or since 1948. And Vic. <laughs> not even Vic rushed for that much with the Eagles. And Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, But, yeah, it's just crazy. And he also had two passing touchdowns. So, the Eagles completely controlled this game offensively, and Miles Sanders had 140 yards as well. I think we had a total of 367 yards rushing, which is an insane amount of rushing yards. So offensively, we controlled the game. Defensively, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I- Yeah, that's my thing, because when I looked at all the headlines, I didn't get to see a lot of the game itself. But when I looked at all the headlines, everyone was like talking as if like the Eagles dominated Green Bay. But then I look at the score, I'm like, it was a one score game at the end of it. Yeah. Like, what? I mean, did it feel like it was really dominating? It felt like it was more of a shootout, which, if you go back in the last podcast, I predicted that because I knew. Yeah. I knew. Yeah. Titus is smart. I... But yeah, did you really feel like on both sides of the ball, you felt like it was dominating or like uh... overall? That's why I was I said originally this was such a weird game because I felt like the Eagles dominated this game and I felt like the defense dominated this game. But I really? don't I don't at the same time. It's such a weird feeling because we were able to pick off Aaron Rodgers twice. That's true. Did Darius Slay get one? Uh he did not. I wanted him to get one so Damn, much. because I that wanted... one quote, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that one that was, quote. Yeah. I wanted him to get one so badly, um, but he, he didn't. Have another chance. But it it was weird because the AJ Brown fumble, the one guy returned it almost to the red zone. So Aaron Rodgers only had like two or three good good passes for touchdowns, or two passes for like touchdowns, which were insane passes. But I think it was like short fields because I think it's what really screwed us was our special teams. And which our special teams played like shit. Like the the Green Bay Packers were basically started on their fifty most of the drives. Started on started on short field. Do do that. Do to that. I don't know. Like our our run defense at like at the end of the second quarter, like we just our defense ramped up. It was tied twenty twenty, and then we started to sack Aaron Rodgers, 
And then we completely stalled them in the third quarter. And then Jordan Love came out, scored a touchdown with Watson. That was like an eight, like I don't like a 70 yard touchdown. I don't know. It was just, it was so weird. I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it was a fever dream. Like it was, we had really good sparks, but we also played really bad. Cause I feel like, I think we had like five total sacks as well. And like we were stalling the, we were stalling Green Bay mostly the entire time. And Green Bay never uh, led in this game. Oh wait, no, they led once, but we led for three quarters. Cause they, t- they, it was 14 to 13 Green Bay, but then we came back and ever since like the beginning of the second quarter, like we led most of the time, like we had complete control of the game. It was like a shootout, but we like basically had control over the game the mm-hmm. entire time. Like we always were leading and stuff. And I don't really know how to describe it. Man, I wish I got to watch it because I think from what I understand, it was entertaining at least high scoring. Yeah, very, and like very. Jordan Love apparently had a really good game too, which mm-hmm. you know we hadn't really seen that yet. His like his real like uh moment mm-hmm. because you know Aaron Rodgers back to back MVP season. I don't know, maybe this is the maybe the tides are now finally changing. This is the moment that Aaron Rodgers once had, of course. Brett Favre getting injured and he had his moment to shine. Brett Favre then ending his career in Minnesota of all places. I don't know, maybe we'll. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Maybe we'll see Aaron Rodgers finish his career with the 49ers like he yeah. always wanted in the first place. That would be so weird. I would Maybe love that it so finally much. happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Maybe yeah, well, Jimmy Garoppolo goes to the Colts. Fuck it. I mean, at this point. <laughs> please, I want that to happen so badly. That would be, be perfection. That makes the most sense, actually. Yeah, it's the most cold thing at this point. The last thing that I'll say about this game, in which I'm trying to remember what I was trying. Well, okay, so we were talking about Aaron Rodgers. Okay, okay. Last thing I'll say is that about the Eagles is that these last three games really, really tested the Eagles in a lot of ways. One, how how will we come back after a loss? We needed a loss, and how will we bounce back from a loss? And a very much needed loss to kind of humble ourselves. How how will we perform with a comeback? We came back from, I believe, thirteen points, fourteen points against the Colts. How how will we like manage the clock? How will we have a comeback? And three, how will we handle in our sh- ourselves in a shootout? And I feel like we handled ourselves really well all three games, even though it's been ugly. And the only thing that I'll say is the turnovers. Like if we fix the turnovers. I'm not too worried about being in the playoffs because I feel like we we showed that we can have a comeback game and we showed that we can be in a shootout in it with any team. Because Green, Green Bay Packers, like you said earlier, very good defense. That's no defense to be undermined by. And it shows that we can... First time they allowed more than 30 points. Yeah, first time. And it just shows that... <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> for eternity but yeah it just shows that we can like hang hang with people and yeah it just makes me more confident in the playoffs we just need to clean up those fumbles and turnovers and once we do that I feel like I'm really confident about in the playoffs whereas four weeks ago I was not so much but that's all I got to say about the Eagles there you have it thank you for the insight Mr. Eagles master thank you now Colt master I don't know what more I can say about this because I also was too focused on Pacers beating Lakers, buzzer beater in LeBron's face. Shout outs to Andrew Nimbard, rookie with that three. That was also an assist from MVP candidate Halliburton, Mm -hmm. who only got that ball because of a tipped rebound from Matherin, rookie of the year slash six man of the year. Slash also MVP candidate. Fuck it. I'll say it. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying all that random shit. Um, mm. we, we're just so stacked, um, the Indiana Pacers. So, you know, that's that's my time. I'm just going to talk about the Indiana Pacers <laughs> instead of the Colts because that's all I care about at this point. Other than the World Cup is also happening. USA now going to the knockout stage. They're going to be playing Netherlands, who I actually think, like, Coming into this tournament, 
Netherlands were looking very scary, but I think it's a doable match. USA could definitely lose here, you know? Um, but I also think they could definitely win. And for once, there's no ties at this point in the tournament. So it's definitely not going to come down to that, unlike their first two games. So I think this actually works out in the USA's favor. Um, I think it's a good opponent to face off with. You know, it's not like a Spain, for example, or a Brazil. So, yeah, I think it works. Um, I'm excited for tomorrow's games, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I feel like I feel like we're gonna do another podcast this week where we just don't talk about football. We just talk about basketball, U.S. soccer, and all the drama about Smash. Smash. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I technically haven't gotten into that this this podcast. I guess that was before we started recording. But uh, yeah, save melee, free melee. Um, I should have started recording when you were explaining. That was yeah, good. Go check out Ludwig's video. He like uploaded frame one like within the hour the news broke. That's that's how you know you're just on top of being a content creator. That's impressive shit right there. Wait, did he do that? Did he post it on Twitter or was it YouTube? Mogul Mail. His like I guess it's not his primary YouTube, like the Ludwig YouTube, but the Mogul Mail YouTube. Mm. He's streaming right now on YouTube. Is he actually? Yeah. What are we saying? He's saying fuck Titus. Damn it. <laughs> Did you see he was like in a box, a glass box for 50 hours? Really? Streaming out of it. Yeah, it was basically like the his second subathon. I did not see that. Yeah, it was like in a public place as well. So people were just like coming up to him. This... Oh, he's playing multiverses? Shit. All right. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't really have anything to say about the Colts other than Johnson Taylor is the best running back in the league um, when you don't look at the stats. <laughs> and Michael Pittman's legit. He had a lot of really good plays. Johnny Woods might be the next Travis Kelsey. Um, Stephon Gilmore is the best Colt to ever play. <laughs> it's actually really funny because – for whatever reason, the Colts get a lot of expatriates. Mm-hmm. Two of our starting cornerbacks, which, you know, there's only like, what, three at best? Yeah. Are former Patriots. So I think that's funny. <laughs> that's um, so funny. That's random thought. About. Yeah. Jeff Saturday is an offensive assistant at best. <laughs> that's what I'll say. He should not be a head coach, let alone even like a coordinator. That dude is just. Shouldn't be a head coach. I'm sorry. Mm. I don't care what anyone says. I love Jeff Saturday, by the way. Like, just as a person, but just like, like... I don't understand. Why? Yeah. It should have been Reggie Wayne. At least he was there the whole year. You know, he was coaching throughout the whole year. The locker room knows him. Mm. If Reggie Wayne was promoted to head coach, that would be so hype. Yes. I want that to happen. Anyways, we can move on to the MVP race, of which. I don't really have much to talk about. I completely like decreased the list. So it's now only down to the top five. Mm. It's number five, Josh Allen. Number four, Joe Burrow. Number three, Jalen Hurts. Number two, Tua. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. It's the same top five in the same order as last week. I just took out number six and number seven, which were Geno Smith and Tom Brady, who both lost. And there's no losers on this list this week, okay? If you want back, you're going to have to win a fucking game. All right? <laughs> Gino, yeah. and then also instead of doing like the positional MVPs, I decided instead I'll just do like offensive player of the year and defensive player of the year as well. Mm-hmm. And right now, offensive player of the year, since that doesn't really take into account record as much as MVP, I'm just going to give it to Josh Jacobs. Mm. Josh fucking Jacobs, as I put here. Um, obviously, like I said, record obviously is bad. They're four and seven. But if you look at his stats, sheesh, it's first in all-purpose yards with 1,484. First in rushing first downs, of which he has 67. He has the longest run of the year, which he did in overtime. Mm. And then he's averaging over 5 yards per carry, 5.3 to be exact, which is the best average of running backs over 150 attempts. Mm. 
these stats are crazy. And they kind of snuck up on us because he's had a good season, don't get me wrong. But he never had that one, like, insane performance. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as he does, you just look at his stats and you're like, oh, shit, he's he's number one. Like, over Derrick Henry, over Saquon Barkley, over Nick Chubb, who have all been in this, you know, list before. Mm-hmm. It's Josh Jacobs now. It's Josh motherfucking Jacobs, as it's written. He's there. taking over. And then defensive player of the year is Micah Parsons, I guess. It just feels like everyone is kind of on this train. And I think other people deserve the recognition. But Micah Parsons is also being a baby on Twitter and saying, why can't I be MVP? Why is it a quarterback award? So, you know, fine. You'll get your flowers, Micah Parsons. You have officially won the midseason defensive player of the year award on the League of the Wings podcast. <laughs> so shut up. All right. I- I hate Mike Micah Parsons so much. I hate him so much. He's such a fucking cowboy, and I hate it. He's he's such a crybaby, and I everything about him like the only acceptable cowboys. Like I can tolerate Dak Prescott. I can tolerate Ezekiel Elliott, kind of Tony Pollard, best cowboy there is. But like, oh my god! Every time I hear Micah Parsons. He's good, don't get me wrong, but he's one of those players where everyone's just like he's the best in the league just because of his name, and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Fuck Listen, my- in my opinion, he's a top five defensive player in the league, but stats, statistically, just looking at the stats, I don't think it supports the narrative that he's like the – the like top candidate by like a mile. Like people are talking about it like it's a, a close and shut case. Like defensive player of the year is Michael Parsons. Mm. I think other people are having an amazing season. And I think it's still up for debate because like as far as like the sack leader goes, like that's still up in the air between like Zadarius Smith <laughs> and Judon, who I, both of those guys I think are having amazing years and they don't get talked about nearly enough. But Alas, you know, Micah Parsons, as I have here, six games of two plus sacks a season. That's really good. I'll give him that. He's second in pressures. That's really good. And, you know, yeah, he plays everywhere on the field. Everyone likes to talk about how versatile he is, blah, blah, blah. We get it. I'll give him his flowers now. I don't know if I'll uphold this opinion later. You know, for now, you can have it. Whatever. He had zero sacks amongst the Eagles. Hey, you want to know another fun cult stat? What's that? Aaron Donald has a sack against every team Mm -hmm. except the Colts and the Rams, of course. Mm. The same. (laughs) And he may retire soon, so I could see them being the only team that Aaron Donald hasn't had a sack on. Obviously, thanks to the Rams. Feels good, honestly. I mean, he did manage to sprain both of Wentz's ankles, but, yeah. you know, maybe that alone should count for a sack. I feel like when he retires, they should give him just one more honorary sack just for that achievement alone. Spraining both ankles, is that's not easy, man. Like, like That's impressive. I'm, I'm still so confused how he managed to do that. I'm like, damn. What, what the so, fuck? Yeah. Has Micah Patterson's ever gone to sack on the Eagles? That might be a fun thing to look at. I'm not quite sure. I will look at that mm. Mm, this season. Do you ever go to Pro Football Reference? No. That's the best stat site. It is. And I Fox hate Fox. that. I hate the fact that Collins Worthless is fucking runs that shit. Wait, Pro Football Reference? That's, yeah. Isn't that PFF? Really? No, PFF is different. Pro uh, Football Reference is a, I mean, it's PFR. Oh, I guess. Uh, wait. PFF yeah. is like the ratings and stuff like that. Yeah, I yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Pro Football Reference is like open source. Like you don't have to pay a fucking subscription to look at stats. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at this so far. He has zero stats. Wait, no, that was early this year. I want. Fuck. Why did it <laughs> bring me early this year? Okay. Wait, it says he got half a sack against the Eagles. 
damn it, he still has a guy in a full sack. <laughs> That's right, baby. But, okay, I think we should get to these week 13 predictions. And we, I'm starting off this this week with one one of two upsets. I pick an upset every single week. And this upset so far, I'm starting off with, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of confident about this upset. I picked New England Patriots to beat the Buffalo Bills. I picked the Patriots last week to beat the Minnesota Vikings. I was wrong, but they were close. And that gives me enough confidence to beat have them beat the Buffalo Bills because I feel like the Bills are struggling a little bit. I know that they still won against the Lions, but they just – Josh Allen has not been looking good. He's not – I feel like he's not confident. And I just feel like New England's Patriots defense is going to be able to make a few stops against that Buffalo defense and, yeah, or offense. I mean, not defense. But, yeah. I like it. Thank you. However, Hmm. the one thing you didn't seem to uh, take into account is the Bills, they're going to win. Off of the basis that the NFL is rigged and there just hasn't been enough Josh Allen clips for the NFL social media. So <laughs> they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to get that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about social media quarterbacks recently. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Josh Allen is one of them and uh, the NFL needs him to prevail. Explain that. Brand. Explain this social media quarterback more. So, uh, of course, um, there is a sports commentator who is a former former NFL player who I'm not even going to say his name because he doesn't even deserve it. He's just he just has the worst takes of all time. Um, who basically called Justin Herbert a social media quarterback because mm-hmm. he has flashy clips but doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> he's just like he doesn't he's not a good like starter or something like that Mm -hmm. i don't know essentially like he was talking about how like everything he does is just for social media even though that's not really true like justin herbert's personality is like very not that at all Mm -hmm. he's not very like uh egocentric so i don't know where he was coming from i guess like obviously the chargers were on like a bad streak or whatever but he was just calling Justin Herbert a social media quarterback because the NFL loves sharing his plays a lot. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think Josh Allen's a social media quarterback. You know what? Now that you're thinking about, or now that you said that, I'm like thinking of like quarterbacks that are like social media quarterbacks. And I'm like, that makes so much sense because I there's like a certain vibe about certain quarterbacks that I'm like, that's just, that's just, that there's something there. There's something that I can't place my like, finger on but would you would you does kyler murray also feel like oh yeah social media the, quarterback 100 yeah percent. yes yes it, it's, obviously I, I say this just like in fun like i don't actually believe this about these players because i think it's pretty demeaning but like there is this like sense like yeah the nfl like hopes they succeed just for the clips yeah yeah most definitely that's i i that's so weird Thank you. Thank you for saying that because I'm like, there there has to be a name for this, but I just can't name it or put like a name to it. But it makes so much sense now. Like Jalen Hurts is starting to be there, but I feel like he's not quite there yet. Nice. Yeah. But okay. okay, okay. Yeah. But a little off topic, but we got Atlanta Falcons versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm, I'm, I got the Atlanta Falcons in which I'm probably going to be eating my words. And they're probably going to lose now. So this is, if you pick Pittsburgh, you probably have a guaranteed win there. Because I'm picking Atlanta, so I feel like Atlanta's just going to lose. Yeah. Um. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) It's happening again. (laughs) <laughs> Atlanta's definitely gonna lose now. Titus, Titus, pick Atlanta. Pick Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got the 
Green Bay Packers versus the Chicago Bears. And Let's go got, Bears. Just kidding. I got Packers. I got Packers as well. Because what does Aaron Rodgers always say about the stadium located in Chicago? That That's his stadium. It's mm. just another home game. I fucking own you. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he does. Wait, is he? We don't even know if he's going to play. He might not play next week. He's questionable. He's questionable. He looked he looked very injured walking into the <laughs> He looked very injured. I don't know why, but that came off as insulting. <laughs> it's like if you just said he looked injured, it's like yeah, but he looked he looked very injured. <laughs> it's an insult and threat. He looked very injured, bro. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that that should be an easy win if uh, Rogers is able to play that game for them. Damn, you just said easy dub. Easy dub for the Packers. Shit, bro. Detroit. Okay, this this week is so like coin flippy because like I could see the Jaguars winning, but I picked the Detroit Lions beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I don't know. After that last win that the Jaguars had last week, I could see the Jaguars winning. But I mean, it was also a three point game, Lions versus the Bills. So. Mm. Let's give both of them credit and say it's going to be a very close game between two very respectable teams, mm. of which they're both named after big cats mm. in cities that most people wouldn't prefer to live in. So there you have it. I just think the Lions are... Will I say it? Mm. Say it, say it. Say it, say it. I, I believe in you. Better. They're better. You said it. You said it. I didn't think you would. I did. I didn't. Yes. Yes. It's good. It's a good day when the Lions are better than the Jaguars. But next game, this is another little bit of an upset, but it's the New York Jets versus the Minnesota Vikings. I got the New York Jets winning. I don't know. Minnesota yeah. Vikings is, is uh, playing against a few tough teams the past few weeks. And I, I just think this is – they have to start losing eventually. Like, this this is the – They had that one loss against the Cowboys not long ago. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like they're going to get their few few losses out of the way, and then they're going to start winning. And I feel like they're going to go two and three the last three games. So Or one and two the last three games. Mm. Mm. I got the Vikings just because I'm not on the Mike White train just yet. I'm I'm just gonna say slow down, sir. Mm. The Bears defense and the Vikings defense, they're not the same. Mm. All right. I think in every aspect, pass rush, coverage, all that. It's just a very different defense. And Mike White is not gonna have as easy of a time. Mm. So and then on the other side of the ball, you don't have Justin Fields who is injured and is struggling. Uh, not able to use all sides of his you know game, so yeah, that's how I look at it. I think it's you know obviously Jets defense is really good, so I think they could realistically hold Vikings to a lower score than usual. But yeah, I think it'll be close overall. I forgot to say, I I can't believe this just passed my mind. Another reason why I got New York Jets is because of Mike fucking White. Like, come on, he's gonna. He's gonna demolish the Vikings. I'm I'm hopping on the Mike White train right now because he he's I don't like him, <laughs> and the fact that I don't like him. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you're hopping on the train because you don't like him. That's something. I my this dislike and his his just goofiness makes me like him so much because he's so easily memeable that I love the fact that he's so memeable and I don't know he's just. 400 yards, three touchdowns, easy dub. But got Washington Commanders versus the New York Giants. I got Washington Commanders because they're on a three-game win streak, I believe. And one of those win streaks or one of those wins comes from the best team in the league, the Philadelphia Eagles, or came from the Philadelphia Eagles. They dominated. They pretty much controlled that entire game. And, yeah, like the Giants, I feel like Giants are fakers. I've been saying it all this year, all this shit. motherfucking year. I've been oh, saying shit. the Giants aren't as good as they are. Talk to them, Cam. They're fucking going to 
lose. End of story. Because I'm tired of the Giants being seven and four. I have the Giants. Mm. Why do you got the Giants? Um, <laughs> well, you're tired of the Giants. I'm tired of Taylor Heineke. <laughs> so, also, I have Daniel Jones in my dynasty league, and believe it or not, in that league, he's like a top ten quarterback fantasy wise. Like people don't realize it, but he's up there. That's weird. Um, Is he just? Does he get like a lot of rushing yards and like touchdowns rushing or yeah the rushing the rushing aspect does help yeah it's it's a very quarterback centric like quarterbacks um get a it's a two quarterback super flex so quarterbacks typically are weighted higher in those type of leagues and because of that he he gets yeah he gets better production mm-hmm. um and turnovers don't matter as much. So, I don't think he's committed a lot of turnovers, honestly, now that I look at it. But anyways, besides the point, I just, want, I just want to see my boy DJ succeed. You know what I mean? He's the next Josh Allen. <laughs> I love I love every time you say that. I don't know why, but it's the best thing ever. One day is going to be true, and I'm just going to look like a genius. Yes. And if it doesn't come true, no one's going to remember because no one's going to remember Daniel Jones' names anymore. He's just going to fade into obscurity. So, <laughs> I... Uh, no matter what it's like you know i think it's a good risk to take just like say some random player is going to pop off and who's going to remember it right no one but no if one it will true. but if it comes true you'll be a legend forever yes yes i'm just going to start saying that about mike white just say it about like any day three pick in the draft like that's the best <laughs> thing you can do <laughs> yes yes we got the game of the week Philadelphia Eagles versus the Tennessee Titans. I think this is going to be another shootout. And the reason why is because I think the Eagles are going to also get on a... That Eagles offense is going to get really red hot again. But I just think we're not going to be able to stop Derrick Henry. We're simply not going to be able to stop Derrick Henry. And I'm going to put this as a comment because I genuinely believe that this is going to happen. 2,000 rushing yards? Two. 2,000 rushing yards. He's going to have <laughs> 250 yards rushing, right? <laughs> and he's going to have two TDs, okay? We are simply we are simply not going to stop Derrick Henry, but we're going to somehow win. <laughs> we are going to somehow win, okay? And because our, our, our run, our run <laughs> is so bad. Let alone our tackling, who can tackle on the Eagles defense? No one. He's just gonna walk over us. Like everyone is last game links to the Green Bay Packers. AJ Dillon was literally falling. He was falling for an extra five yards while three three separate players were on him. There's one play where an Eagles guy tackled him and pushed him forward for an extra five yards. Not even joking. He ta- he got tackled and gained an extra five yards. And that's AJ Dillon. This is Derrick Henry. Like, ain't no way the Eagles are going to stop him. There's no way. It's over. It's over. But the Eagles are going to somehow win. Because <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of the ball, Miles Sanders, 300 yards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right, well, I... I have the Eagles because fuck the Titans. Yeah. Never in a million years will I pick the Titans. So, yeah. Baltimore is going to beat Denver. We don't have to talk about that anymore. Sorry, Trey. Your team sucks. Fuck you, Trey. Feels like every team you support is just not good. Yeah. New York Yankees, Denver oh, Broncos. Yeah. I was going to say Lakers. Oh, yeah. I, I they... rubbed that in his face and he just. He didn't care. <laughs> it's like I haven't watched the Lakers at all this season. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, damn, it's rough out here. <laughs> Lakers are so bad. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, got Cleveland Browns versus Houston Texans. Oh, this is. Do you think this is scripted? I just realized this. I just realized. <laughs> Here's my theory, my working theory. All right. Yes, yes it's scripted. You know how there have been a lot of close games from the Texans side and then they like somehow lose at the very end. Yeah. I think I think they've been setting it up where they started tanking early because they really just want one win. 
Well, I mean, I guess it's going to be two, but the win that they really want is just this one. Mm. They really just want to fuck over Deshaun Watson. Just obliterate him. And so they've just been tanking because they still want that number one overall pick, right? Mm. But they want this win really badly. So they don't let themselves even one win beforehand other than that rare exception where they did win. Um, who the fuck did they even beat? I don't remember. I actually don't. Like who it, was a, it was an absurd game. Bro. I remember feeling very weird about it. <laughs> oh, it was against the Jaguars, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where the Jaguars only scored six. It was just a very odd performance from Trevor Lawrence. Mm. Through two interceptions. But needless to say. Yeah, needless to say, uh, Deshaun Watson, even if he, like, does good this season, it's not going to be right away. Like, there's no way. He only got to start practicing with the team again, like, a couple weeks ago. Mm. I just don't see it. Yeah, you're kind of making me want to change my mind because I've been saying fuck Cleveland. This entire... But at the same time, Chubb is rushing for 200. He's rushing for 200? Nick Chubb. Oh. Yeah, I think Nick Chubb is going to be the sole reason why they win. Could be. Mm. So we're going to have two two 200 per yard performances this week. For sure. For sure. Got Seattle Seahawks versus LA Rams. I got the Seahawks. Yeah, I gave up on the Rams. But the, the, the recording ended because of my internet, or one of our internet at least, uh, last time, but I did have the upset of the Rams over the Chiefs, which did not come true because the Rams suck. It was just like my one last hope in the Rams. Like if they get that win, maybe they just go on a tear. We go go to the playoffs, you know. It didn't happen, so I've completely given up on the Rams this season. I don't know. Good luck in the draft, free agency. You're gonna have to do something. That's all I know. Yeah, so. I was I was so confused. Why did you pick the Rams to beat the Chiefs? I guess you just explained it, but <laughs> yeah, just to explain it, it's just like but, yeah, you know, it's but... just a, it's just a nice upset. I feel like Chiefs were, you know, two on the up. I need, I think they needed to get a little humbled, mm. and uh, I think Rams still have the pieces, right? I don't think it's impossible, mm. but yeah, just kind of like my last little hope that they could still be good this season. But now I'll never pick them again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Don't ever pick them again. Got Miami Dolphins versus the San Francisco 49ers. This is another game that I'm kind of conflicted with, but I picked the Miami Dolphins to win. Me too. I just think that Dolphins offense is just too high powered. And this is going to be a big, big, big test for the San Francisco 49ers defense. And let's see if that streak of showing out teams in the second half for that 49ers defense holds continues. I don't think it will. But. Yeah, this is a big um, coaching battle because Shanahan Tree, it's Kyle Hanahan versus Mike McDaniel's. Mike McDaniel's, of course, was basically Shanahan's like right hand man for like many many years. Like even preceding the 49ers, they were with the Browns with Manziel. So yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting battle of wits because they're very witty coaches with like you know probably the most like offensive firepower you could have while also still having really respectable defenses and um very similar like running schemes stuff like that so it's gonna be very fun to watch i think i think all televisions should be tuned into this game um although a lot of the other options are pretty good like Bengals chiefs i would say in this time slot, it's a fair mm. choice as well. The AFC Championship run back. Who do you got here? I got this Kansas City Chiefs winning. This is another one of those games where I'm like, I can see the Bengals winning again. Yeah, and a lot of coin flips. A lot of coin flips. And why did you choose the Bengals? Um, I'm predicting a scenario where the Chiefs, I mean – the Bengals win this one, and then the Chiefs beat the Bengals in the playoffs as, like, revenge for, like, last year, quote-unquote. Just because I don't see the Bengals returning to the AFC Championship, say what you will. But, yeah, I think Bengals will get their little win here, but they'll win the battle, but they won't win the war. Yeah, I think they have a lot of pieces, like, 
I, I think they have everything they need to like give the Chiefs a hard time. I think Jamar Chase will actually be healthy this time around. That would be important. Plus, um, I'm just I don't know. I, I think I'm a little precautious because I don't think like the Travis Kelsey tear is just gonna work against every team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't think it's gonna be like this until the end of the season. I think one I mean, some teams have given him a hard time, but I think one team is gonna have to really like show up and like kind of put that to a stop temporarily and like force Mahomes to, you know, use a lot of his other weapons. And I mean, we'll see how that goes. Juju has still had some good games, but I don't know. I think Bengals as a defense are able to like limit um Travis Kelsey. So yeah. I like that. I like that. I think I think I like that with holding Travis Kelsey. I just think we're going to see more of the other offense. And I feel like Patrick Mahomes is just going to be gunslinging it every which way. And I think think Tony is going to get a huge game. I will say that if this does happen where they win and Mahomes is able to spread the ball better, not that he hasn't already. I think he's done a pretty great job at that. But against the Bengals particularly, he's like by far my MVP favorite. A lot of people are so going to say Tua, and I think that's fine. But I just think, like, when you look at the stats, man, mm. volume mixed with efficiency, mixed with lack of, like, you know, turnovers, I just think he's got it all in my book. And uh, the wins, the wins matter a lot. He's in a tough conference, had a lot of tough opponents. So, Yeah, he almost has a 1,000 yards over Jalen Hurts passing-wise, and it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. We got the Chargers versus the Raiders. I got the Chargers winning. I just think it, Austin Eckler is going to be able to run over, all over that uh, Raiders defense. And, yeah, I just don't think the Raiders is going to have a answer for that. And I think that's the reason why. The answer is Josh Jacobs, dude. That is true. If our Eckler runs for a 1,000, so will Jacobs. Yeah. That's just how it goes. I think I the real play. thing is that uh, I think Justin Herbert – is starting to get it together now. I think he's got all his weapons finally, like, healthy, like, for sure healthy now. And I think he's just going to start balling till the mm-hmm. end of the season. And Trey's going to look at it and be like, shit, I should have never traded. Mm-hmm. That's my yeah. prediction. Yes. And I think Herbert's going to be the reason why Trey is not going to make it to the playoffs and why Brendan's going to make it to the playoffs. Oh, and shit. Trey. I'm oh. making that prediction now. Brendan's gonna make the playoffs. You think Tua's gonna start underperforming, maybe? Yeah, maybe in the next couple of weeks, but then he's gonna start taking off again. But it's like gonna be already too late. Like oh yeah. he'll start performing well during the playoff stretch, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean he's got a tough match against the 49ers, that's for sure. Yeah. That is for sure. For sure. But you got Dallas first, Indianapolis Colts. I got Dallas winning. I, I want to see the Colts get that fifth-round pick. I'm rooting for them to get that fifth-round pick, and I think the Cowboys are going to – I don't know. I don't know why I picked the Cowboys. What are they going to do, dude? What are they going to do? I forgot about that defense. I forgot about that Colts defense, not going to lie. I don't know why I keep keep forgetting about that. I Yeah, I mean, I do want the Colts to lose, but I'm going to say Colts win just because they never do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a, yeah, that's about it. Mm. Yeah, I I think it's going to be a low scoring game, and this is really going to test that Dallas uh offense against the really good defense, the best in the league. So I don't know. Can are they going to be the first team to score over thirty points against the Colts? Are they going to score under ten points? I think they're going to be crazy. I think they're going to score under ten points. Oh, shit. Put that down. My um, prediction is that Jonathan Taylor, more rushing yards than Elliot and Pollard combined. Mm. I like these spicy, spicy predictions. Because I know, like, the pass rush and, like, pass coverage is really great from the Cowboys, but how's their rushing defense? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I think it's kind of good. Fantasy wise, they are pretty good, like sixth best. I don't know who they've really faced. Is the thing as far Miles as like, Sanders, Duh. <laughs> the premier running backs. They faced John Joe Mixon, Saquon Barkley, Miles, Miles Sanders. Honestly, I don't think they've played like a 
a Nick Chubb type, you know what I mean? Or like a Josh Jacobs type who have just like high volume and stuff like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay with this prediction and say Jonathan Taylor has a good game. Nice. Nice. I, I like this. I like this, but Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Saints. I think this is going to be a close match, but I think ultimately Tom Brady is going to do Tom Brady things and drive down the field Two minutes left in the game and have a miracle win. Probably, yeah. Now that's yeah, how they win. I'll, I'll I'll put that. You say, Tom Brady classic, fourth quarter comeback. Yeah. Or game winning drive. Do do do. Yeah, I think it's good. I also have the Bucks, but I'm gonna be spicy in a different direction than you. I'm gonna say it's a blowout. Mm, I'm gonna say perfect. Bucks score thirty plus. Damn, damn. I like it. I like it. I need I need the Saints to keep losing. They've won too many games right now. <laughs> four is too many. Yes. Hey, like I said, every four win team is a game away from having a top five pick. Mm. So don't and worry about it. This was a very long podcast. I think we reached like two hours. I think this was our record. Well, what time did we start? Because I we started like around it wasn't eight thirty, like we said it would be. I think we started around 9 30 because like I can't like we I texted you at like 8 45 <laughs> and then you didn't answer until like 8 8 55 and then we started to talk to Trey for a while so yeah. I, I think it may be two hours and 10 minutes our record edited is two hours and 13 minutes and I usually shave off about like five to ten minutes when I edit so this could be like two hours and 13 minutes but it could be shaved down to two hours and five minutes. Mm-hmm. But the our record is two hours and 13 minutes, which is absurd. And also the crazy thing too, is that this year we haven't went under an hour and 10 minutes for a podcast, which we usually, the past first two years, we've always went under an hour for majority of the time, which is absurd. Like we've been, we were averaging like 45 to 55 minutes per podcast, but now we're averaging like an hour and a half to two, two hours and 15 minutes, which is absurd. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking for so long about. We have been. Yeah. Did you see what Brendan sent about getting an iMac for $25? Mm, I saw that, but I just didn't feel like reading. <laughs> Yo, guys, Temple is upgrading their IMAX. So they're selling their old ones for $25. It's an older model, like 2012, 2015, but it's an insane deal. Here's the link if you want to request one. If you don't want one, let me know. I'll ask I'll ask you to request one for me. I'll <laughs> give you the money for it. <laughs> Facts. Facts. www.titan.com.edu slash CRC. All right, I'm done. But yes, that you got him, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got him so good, bro. All right, do you got any final? What the fuck, iMac holiday special, twenty five dollars. That's actually insane. They probably have like a shit ton of viruses and shit. Then they're probably like about to explode if you plug it in. They like short circuit your entire house. No, they're saying it might not have like any gigabytes of ram i think that's the one catch so you have to like take care of that on your own but still not bad just cosmetic blemishes do not affect functionality so there might be some wear and tear Mm. interesting interesting all right so do you got any final words for this podcast no that's all Mm. i really like talking to these people actually oh you don't yeah i'm kind of over it should we just not have a podcast next week yeah, I'm cool with it. All right, cool. All right, see you guys. See you never. This is our last podcast. Peace.